In terms of Lyme disease, it's the hard shell Ixodes ticks or deer ticks that transmit the disease. And it's fairly specific. We don't really know of ticks, um, other types of ticks transmitting Lyme disease. Um, but having said that, all ticks can carry disease of various sorts, and so one should be concerned about bites of any types of tick. Ticks need a particular type of climate to survive. In Alberta, it's very dry, which means that the ticks don't survive long term, at least the ones that cause Lyme disease. Um, but I'm sitting here talking to you in my office today with 35 millimeters of rain predicted today. We've had a very wet spring. We've had this scenario occurring for several years now. And so as it becomes more humid and moist here, the possibilities of having tick populations existing long term in Alberta uh, increases. And so uh, will we have uh, real changes in terms of tick populations in Alberta? We don't really know yet, but as the climate changes, these possibilities certainly become very real. Lyme disease begins as an infection at the point where the tick has bitten you and so you have a localized skin infection. But uh, the second thing that happens during this disease is that the spirochete gets into your bloodstream and gets transported throughout the body. The spirochete can then exit the bloodstream in a variety of different locations. And so infection of different tissues causes different symptoms and so because of its ability to disseminate to the brain, to a variety of tissues, the heart, the neurological tissue, we can end up with a wide variety of symptoms. Erythema migrans is a bullseye type rash. Uh, it's pretty distinct and it's usually um, a fairly good indicator of Lyme disease such that uh, medical protocol is that if somebody presents with a rash like that um, in an area where Lyme disease exists, they get treated immediately without having to go through uh, any Lyme testing. Uh, also at the stage that one gets the rash, Lyme testing would be negative because the immune system has not yet had a chance to build up a, a response to the bacteria. The symptoms of early infection uh, that's disseminated, so after it's left the skin, gotten into the blood system, uh, are generally flu-like symptoms. So one can be tired, uh, fever, feeling like garbage, aches and pains, um, but there are no upper respiratory symptoms, so um, no sneezing, runny nose, or coughing. So if those types of symptoms present and you've been in a location where there might be ticks present, um, then um, one should consider the possibility of Lyme disease. This organism is one which is very fascinating. Uh, the bacteria which cause this disease, Borrelia burgdorferi and related bacteria, um, are very unusual. They have a very strange type of DNA structure. They have uh, an interesting trick called antigenic variation whereby they can fool uh, your immune system they have a variety of different unusual ways of um, making a living, so to speak, and so they're really very fascinating just from a biology point of view alone. And of course, clinically, they are very important, so anything that we learn about this organism may be helpful to be able to um, improve diagnosis or treatment or prevention of the disease. Basic research is very important because it allows us to gain an understanding of these pathogenic organisms. And the detailed understanding of how these organisms function is very important to us because we discover where the Achilles heels of these organisms are. If we don't know the weak point in the armor, we don't know where to attack. And as we do basic research and we find out how these organisms function, where the weak points in their armor are, then we can design new approaches for attacking them, stopping them, um, and preventing or even curing diseases uh, using new approaches. So basic research is exceedingly important 
because it provides the basic underpinning and framework for creative new approaches for treating diseases and for changing healthcare delivery. The Snyder Institute for Chronic Diseases has played a major role in our research um, through the live cell imaging facility. This facility allows us to do things we could never do before. Um, we have been able to see the first pictures of live bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, uh, at work in a living host, which in our case has been a mouse. Um, and this has been done in the live cell imaging facility and has allowed us to pursue um, a, a new line of research where we can study the infecting organism in a living mouse um, and where the uh, infection process can be studied and uh, it's also, these studies have been done in collaboration with Paul Kubes' lab um, and it's allowed them to uh, also focus on the host immune response to the organism. So uh, we've really opened up a brand new area of research in terms of studying this organism and that's all uh, thanks to the live cell imaging facility uh, in the Snyder Institute for Chronic Diseases. Being aware of the disease is exceedingly important both to the general public and for physicians. For the general public, they need to be aware when they are in areas where there's a significant risk of Lyme disease. Um, this means you don't run and hide and stop going outside. It simply means that if you're in areas where Lyme ticks are known to exist, then one takes preventative precautions. Uh, for example, you tuck your pants uh, into your socks so that if a tick crawls onto your foot, it's going to crawl up your pants, not underneath your pants and onto your body. Uh, wearing light colored clothing means that ticks are easier to spot. Um, it's important to bear in mind that the nymphal ticks, uh, a life stage which is fairly small, the size of a pinhead, um, are difficult to spot. So light colored clothing can really help. Um, it also means that you can use um, insect repellent with DEET because this will help to repel ticks. And very importantly, at the end of the day, um, take off your clothing, shake it out, um, do tick checks to make sure that there aren't any ticks that are uh, crawling around on you or your clothing uh, or embedded in your body. All of these things can play a major uh, in role in terms of stopping tick bites. Um, it's also important for physicians because um, oftentimes physicians think that there's no possibility of getting Lyme disease in Alberta or in many other places in Canada, but the landscape is changing and physicians need to be aware that Lyme disease is a real possibility and should never be completely thrown out uh, as an option until it's properly investigated.